Hello everybody and welcome. It's new DLC time and today we're having a first look and review of the new five circle route for Trains in World 4. If this happens to be the first video you've seen by me, then my name's Richard, aka DadRail, and I'm a mainline freight train driver and former passenger train driver based in the southeast of England. Before we jump into the video, I have got to tell you that all the views and opinions expressed within this video are solely my own and may not affect those of any companies I may be employed by or associated with. Furthermore, I've got to tell you that Dovetail Games um, and Rivet Games have given me the key for this route completely free of charge. However, they've got no editorial control over the video and I'm not being paid to make this video by them. Um, so all the views and opinions are solely my own. If I don't like something, I'll tell you I don't like it. Equally, if I do like something, I'll also tell you that. So hopefully we'll get uh, quite a balanced and honest review. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump into the game. So here we are in Train Scene World 4 and we've got the five circle line, Edinburgh to Kirkcaldy and Dunfermline installed. I'm going to make a quick apology for the potential butchering of pronunciations in this video. As those of you who have seen my videos and streams before will know that I am really good at butchering pronunciations. So let's have a quick look at scenarios. What do we get? Fun around the Firth, coming full circle, high winds, scattered spares and railway rubbish that we saw in the rivet streams uh, preview stream. I'll let you pause the video if you want to have a look through the descriptions on those. Um, we also get the training modules for the five circle route introduction and we've got the free roam and timetable mode as always. So layers on this playable layers you've got the class 385 services which is from the Scotland Express and we've got the class 170 which is the new train included with the route. So we're going to click on that and we are going to load up um, one Lima seven five. So we've got our list of services here. There are quite a few timetabled services. Now you'll notice on the mini map down at the bottom, um, you've got the east side of the route and the west side. So the east or south side and the west or north side, depending on which way you're looking at it. I think they're called east and west. Um, you'll notice that all of the routes appear to be going via the um, east side of the circle. That is wrong. So anything that goes to Glenrothes with Thornton is actually going along the west side. For some reason there is an error with the uh, the mini map at the moment. Hopefully there'll be a day one patch to get that fixed. Um, but yeah, the services that go via Glenrothes with Thornton do go via the, the uh, west side of the loop. Anyway, we are going to load up one Lima 75. Which is an Edinburgh Waverley to Perth service. This will run via the East Loop um, all the way from Edinburgh up to uh, McInch. So that'll be the full length of the route on that side. We're going to keep it on the 1st of July. We're going to turn the dynamic weather off. Otherwise, it'll start raining and get really foggy and we won't be able to see anything. So we are going to split this video up into two parts. So the first run we're going to do, like we say, will be Edinburgh. Um, Perth, so that will take us all the way up to McKinch on the south side, and then the second run we'll do will be Glenrothes down, back down to Edinburgh on the west or north side, so we'll get to see both sides of the loop. We're going to be having a look at the stations as we go along, having a look at the cab and the train environment, inside shots, outside shots, and kind of just uh, seeing what we make of it. So, welcome to the Scott Rail service to Perth, calling at Haymarket. South Gyle, Edinburgh Gateway, Inverkeething, Kinghorn, Kirkcaldy, Markinch. If you see something that doesn't look right, speak to staff or text the British Transport Police on 61016. We'll sort it. See it, say it, sort it. So not wanting to interrupt the, the announcement says, you can see you can hear the announcements inside the train but not from outside the train. Um, fully automatic announcements which is a really nice feature, I'm really pleased to finally have that in game. Okay so I've put the safety systems on, day running and doors open on our left hand sides. So this is quite similar to the Electrostars that we got in game already, it's a pretty bog standard um, UK kind of setup. We will go through the cab. Uh, and have a good look around it as we go along. So we'll sort of go through all the controls that are operational, um, everything that you can press, everything you can't press. Jumping into the outside view, and we're here at Edinburgh Waverley Station. We've got a few minutes, so we'll go for a little run around. So 
My understanding is the other side of the station is now unlocked. So we can now get over to this side of the station, although the scenery does look pretty sparse to be honest with you. Um, you do get the 801 layer, so you will see 801s in and out of here, the LNER Azuma services. Uh, doesn't appear to be any in here at the moment, but they are in game and I have seen them when I have been uh, playing through previously. So there's not really been much changes to Edinburgh Waverley over what we had on the Scotland Express service. It does look a little bit... Um, for a major terminus it looks a little bit empty and a little bit dead if I'm being completely honest with you. But anyway, let's board the train and get going. We have got the guards buzzer on there, um, it's a little bit quiet but that's a really nice feature so we get the guards buzzer going off um, when the doors are shut. We do have to close the doors manually but the guards buzzer is working. We'll do an inside pull away on this one, we will do some outside pull aways as well. One thing to note on this is the engine noises in the cab are very, very quiet. Now, I've got a little bit of experience with class 170s, or should I say class, class 171s, um, which are virtually the same unit. The only difference, the, the main difference being the coupler on the front is a downer type coupler on a 171. Um, I've never driven one, but I've done a considerable amount of commuting on them, and I've done a considerable amount of route learning in the cab of these. The cabs of these load these units are very very quiet there we go coming across the point work the cabs of these units are very very quiet in reality so although it does sound a little bit too quiet this is how they are in reality I guess when we talk about sound it's it's very subjective it's quite difficult to strike that balance between what is audible and, and what people want to hear um, to what you would actually be able to hear in real life for example on a lot of trains you can't hear the automatic announcements in the cab but obviously playing the game we want to be able to hear it so it's kind of striking that balance so in terms of the the volume in the cab it is pretty accurate I do like the automatic announcements. There is definitely a bit of a delay between the chime going off and the announcement happening. I'm not sure if that's prototypical, um, but I'm really, really pleased that we've got some sort of announcements in game. At last, it's something I've been banging on about for ages, so definitely, definitely really pleased that we've, we've got that in game at last. So we'll do our stop at Haymarket and then we'll have an outside shot for the pull away to let you listen to the, the sounds of the 170. Let's see if we can get a decent stop here. Fingers crossed. Okay, first test, have we got stop car markers? It looks like we have, I can see stop car markers up on the left. <laughs> That's a good start. We are free for the free. Uh, we've got an S car mark. That'll do. We'll take that. And we've got the tram on the right hand side there, which is a nice little touch. And we are all stopped. Doors on the left hand side. So, personally I think the 170 model uh, does look very nice, I think they've done a pretty good job of that. It does suit the Scott Rail livery as well. And 
and as I said, we're doing outside. We'll position ourselves for a a nice sort of flyby shot, so we can hear the sounds of the motors. Okay, so we are off to South Guile. In my experience, the motor sounds, I think, are passable. Um, I seem to recall 170s being a little bit more dronier than that. The motors do sound a little bit high-pitched. Um, they're not too bad. They're not too bad. It looks like they've been improved upon since the um, the first preview stream. Um, and I think they're, they're pretty passable now. Like I said, I do seem to recall 170s being a little bit dronier than this. Um, but certainly not too bad at all. Uh, it's disappointing to see that Haymarket Depot is still quite empty off to our right hand side there. Would have liked to have had some um, some berth stock in there. That would have been quite nice just to fill it out, just to give the, the route a little bit more life. We're going to lose the uh, OLE equipment in a minute as we can go all around the corner. Um, we've got really good draw distance on that. You can see the OLE quite far off in the distance. The um, overhead line equipment doesn't look as detailed as it did in the, um, the Glossop. Not the Glossop, sorry. The Suffrage Headline, um, which was recently released. I think the Suffrage Headline was was a very very good release and I think that's kind of set a new standard for uh, DLCs so I think we're kind of, we're kind of going to hold everything in a, a bit of a higher light because of that 385 just gone past us not a great deal of noise as it went past us Turning off to the right, heading down towards South Guile. We'll soon arrive at South Gyle. Don't forget to take your belongings with you before you leave the train. The actual performance of the train, the braking acceleration performance does feel pretty good. I'm uh, it does feel like a nice train to drive. It definitely does feel like a nice train to drive. I look forward to them getting all the suspension physics in game. We've got the suspension physics on the Blackpool branches on the Pacer, uh, which adds so much to the immersion and, and the, the feel of the game. So I look forward to that being implemented um, across the board. So that's not anything specific with this route, I will just add. That is a, um, a train scene well sort of core update type thing that hasn't yet been implemented. So yeah, definitely look forward to getting that in game. That'll be pretty cool. It's a shame we don't have any platform announcements. And the actual kind of ambient noises outside the train are sort of non-existent. We've got sort of no noises of people chattering, nothing like that going on, no sort of distant. Yeah, it just just it just feels pretty dead. Looking at the Yeah, 
yeah, looking at the textures here, I'm, 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 I'm trying not to be too critical, but. Okay, we're off to uh, Edinburgh Gateway. Platform 2. Lovely announcements. We'll soon arrive at Edinburgh Gateway. Again, the way the announcements are coming Don't through there. To take your belongings with you before you leave the train. That's what we were talking about earlier about striking that balance between um, realism and between, you know, personal preference and playability. The announcements there in the cab are coming through really loud and clear. In reality, you'd, they'd be quite muffled. You'd be able to hear them sort of through the um, uh, the saloon. Oh, God, I, I'm trying to think of the word and it's escaped me. The panelling, the um, yeah, <laughs> the saloon door. Bulkhead, that's the one I'm looking for. Yeah, you'd be able to kind of hear them through the bulkhead. Um, sometimes they might play in the cab as well, through like a small speaker. Um, but normally they're not going to be sort of that audible and clear. But then if you've got them in game, you kind of want to, you know, you are going to want to be able to hear them. So I can sort of understand why they've taken that approach. stop all stop Edinburgh Gateway let's jump out and go and have a quick look around so the escalators this is a pretty cool thing in this route um, the escalators work Obviously I'm in like free camera mode at the moment, but if you're in uh, walking around you can get on the escalators and they do work, um, which is a pretty cool, pretty cool thing. Yeah, the glass textures look pretty nice there. The Edinburgh Gateway Station. I assume that's like... Okay, we have a tram running with no overhead wires. That's interesting. Obviously, that's the tram depot there. Um, yeah, make of that what you will. I guess it's not particularly visible from the train. You're sort of only going to be able to see it if you're in free roam camera, but... Right, we're off. Okay, so I am rolling back there, which brings me on to another really nice feature. We've got hill start button um, on this train, and you do have to use it. So hill start on. Power into free, hill start off, and that'll stop us rolling back. So the purpose of the hill start button, obviously when you've got a combined power brake controller like this, as soon as you take it out the brake position and into power, your brakes are gonna release, but it takes a few seconds for the engines to spool up. So the purpose of the hill start button, which is this silver button here, is to allow you to keep a little bit of brake on whilst the engines are spooling up, so you can move the controller from the brake position to the power position um, whilst keeping a little bit of brake in. Uh, your keyboard shortcut for that is the um, at key. Same button you would use to apply the brakes on uh, locomotive hold stock. You just press and hold that. Right, we are off to Inverkeefing, platform number two. Uh, we're going to be going over grass on the track. Going over some sort of big iron structure in a minute. So 
So I believe off to our left we've got... I'm assuming it's Edinburgh Airport. We do have an airport off to our left. There are There is no air traffic or aeroplanes at the moment, unfortunately. Um, they have stated that is a memory issue with loading in of the fourth bridge. And you've got the nice kind of changeover noise there on the engine as we pick up a bit of speed, which is nice. Let's see if we, we got an 80 coming up. Let's see if we can get out to 100 before we get there. struggle to do that. We're giving it a good go though. Quite gradient intensive this route. There are a fair few gradients on it. Unfortunately, we don't have any freight layers or rail tour layers on it here as yet, although Rivet have said they're going to add them. Um, so I look forward to getting those in. I don't believe in reality there is a great deal of freight that runs over this line. I think it's, it's quite light on freight. But you do get like the Royal Scotsman services. Um, I think there is one or two freight services that run over here. But certainly rail tours is something they could get in. It would just give us a little bit more playability, I feel. go over the fourth bridge. So the fourth bridge has most definitely got to be the highlight of this route. Built by or designed by Sir John Fowler and Sir Benjamin Baker, opening in 1890, the fourth bridge is a World Heritage Site. It's 2,467 metres long and 110 metres above high water mark. I've done my homework, are you impressed? It's a rare thing. And of course we've got the full throat bridge model as well, which is, uh, it's nice, we're liking that. So we keep our speed at about 50, we will do an outside shot once we get about halfway across the bridge, we'll see how far we can zoom out. Um, because it is, it has been modelled really, really nicely. It's, it's quite an intricate structure to model and I think they've made a really nice job of it. It's worth checking out the nighttime lighting on it because it does light up at night which is really good. And if you've got dynamic weather turned on it's quite often quite thick and foggy across here as you would expect. Um, the disappointment for me on this again is there's no shipping traffic underneath and they've cited memory issues because loading all this, all these textures and all this kind of um, the st structure of the fourth bridge in and the water textures. So they've, they've kind of cited memory issues with that.
certainly is a magnificent structure. It, it really is. Never seen it in real life. I'm uh, going to have to make a point of doing that at some point. Right, let's see what the lighting is like in the tunnel. Not too bad, not too bad. on the left there looks all very repeated. Not a massive fan of that if I'm being honest. We've got a 40 across the bridge here. We've only got 1.8 miles to the station. And we're on a downhill as well. We'll soon arrive at Inverkeeving. Inverkeeving. Don't forget to take your belongings with you before you leave the train. really run away with you on these gradients, especially coming down into the stations. Um, you can think the train is slowing down quite nicely, then all of a sudden it just doesn't stop as you were expecting it to because of the gradient. And we've got the two speeds there, the differential speed, so the 30 would apply to... Um, to put it simply, the 30 would apply to freight trains and 40 everything else. There's a little bit more to it than that, but we'll, we'll keep it simple at the moment. And we've got no passengers waiting for us here at Inverkeithing. And all stop, all stop. So whilst we're stopped, we'll go and have a... If we put the train into neutral, it won't do that. Uh, we'll go and have a look inside the cabin. There's kind of a threshold there where you can and can't hear the motor sounds. We've got our first class cabin. No, 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 that's not supposed to happen. Okay. Uh, we've got the guards panel there, we can't get into that one, we can get into this one here. Um, cleaner sockets, energised local door. We'll have to have a little play with that at some point. And then walking through. I think the interior's been really nicely modelled. It looks really good. Credit where credit's due, the, um, the modelling on the train is, is really nice. The station here looks pretty decent as well. Right, let's
let's get going. We're delaying everything. Okay, so we've got 1.2 miles to Dalgetty Bay, which is going to be our next station stop. Uh, we'll have a quick look around the cab at this point. So starting on the back wall, we've got our pretty bog-standard uh, MCB panels. Radio cut in, radio cut out. A few of those are clickable. Um, nothing that we really need to touch. Uh, we've got door controls, DSD holdover buttons over here. Which way are we going? Straight on. Uh, cab aircon system. No sound effect associated with that, which is quite disappointing. So one of the most dominant sounds in modern units like this is the air conditioning fans in the cab. You've normally got the constant hum of them, so um, quite disappointing. We've we've got no sounds associated with that. Uh, train preheat button, uh, not operable. Train lighting on, train lighting off, so that's your cat, yes, your saloon lighting. Uh, windscreen to mist works, notice board light on and off. Um, and then we've got our full range of lighting up there for the front of the train. Uh, coming down, we've got the TMS system. This, there's nothing on here you can interact with on the TMS, unfortunately. So you're pressing buttons and nothing's happening. It does come up with, uh, I think the train fault light lights up in some circumstances, but yeah, generally that's, that's dead. Um, We've got our door controls here. Door deselect. I don't know if that works. We'll, we'll try that in a few moments. Um, door release buttons, signal buttons we've already seen. Foot warmer, cab side driver's light, compressor speed up button. Don't know if that is functional or does anything, but we've got it there. Um, engine stop and start, which both work. We'll do an engine stop and an engine start in a few minutes. Um, train fault lights and sort of data recorder healthy and bits and bobs like that. 0.6 miles to go to our next station. Uh, coming around, we've got our controller here, so we've got uh, reverse neutral off. We've got our power brake controller. DRA, AWS, we've got our TPWS panel down here, safety systems isolated. Everything as you'd sort of expect to find it. Coming around onto the right hand panel, uh, WSP activity. If we start getting a bit of wheel slide, that does light up, which is pretty cool. Couple and uncouple buttons, which I believe are functional. You can couple these together. Just being mindful not to overshoot we'll Dalgetty Bay. Arrive at Dalgetty Bay. Don't forget to take your belongings with you before you leave the train. To remember that hill start button on the way off. And we are free for the free. So unfortunately all of the services are free cars, there's no variation in the length of the services. Um, I'm not sure if that's prototypical but it's a little bit irritating all the same. And as soon as we open the door, everyone starts walking down towards the train. Um, okay, yeah, so carrying on. Uh, apply traction sand, hazard light button. Which does give us our flashing hazard lights on the front. That is as we would expect it to. Uh, then we've got our wash wiper control. So we've got slow, fast, intermittent. The wash button doesn't work. That's something I really would like to see in game. I've mentioned that a few times. But your wiper control, you can either control just the driver's wiper, um, or we can control both wipers. So that's quite nice that they've implemented uh, that feature in there. Panel down here is not operational. The on-train communications panel uh, is not operational. Contact signal by pressing on the handset as usual. We do have the um, destination display on the outside, which does work. So we can scroll through that. There we go. If we put down many up, we go to the front. It says down many. This doesn't affect your um, your automatic announcements. 
So they are completely separate. They work automatically. You can't interface with those. You can't turn them off. Um, they kind of just do their own own thing. Just scrolling through the destinations that we've got there. Uh, McKinch, I think that's as far as we were going anyway. GSMR radio, which I haven't turned on. Very, very basic functionality. You've got your brightness control working on there. You've got your volume up and down. The sound's pretty correct. Uh, your contact signaler button. No need to register this or anything. You notice your head code doesn't come up on there. Uh, obviously on the Goblin Suffragette line your head code comes up and you can do the, the whole registering. Registration code 998, registering lead driver, weighing check head code. Yeah, nothing comes up. It's a very, very limited function on the GSMR. It's pretty much just a case of um, turning it on which is a little bit disappointing. rolling back because I haven't used my hill start button so you do need to use your hill start button Definitely a lot of harsh gradients on this. So in terms of timetable, we're now stopping at uh, Abadour, Abad 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 <laughs> Kinghorn, Kikogli, and then Makinch. And we've got 2.2 miles to our next station. Yeah, so carrying on around the cab, we've got this little screen here, which uh, they've said it's some sort of CCTV screen. I'm not entirely sure what that would be for in reality. Um, I believe it might be the driver advisory system, DAS, which tells the driver when to coast, when to shut off power, gives them some indication as to how they're running um, relative to the timetable. Not 100% sure though, it could well be a CCTV screen. Emergency stop button, which does work. We've got our safety system isolations over there. Um, Got sort of door control panel on the right hand side, which I'll show you in a minute. You got your bog standard kind of blinds that we can play with. Not automatic on this, unlike the 710, you've actually got to uh, lift them for yourself. Like the graffiti on the bridge there, that's pretty cool. You've got little spaces like this, like the hill on the left, where the textures just. like the, the, the tree textures and the colour and the foliage, it all seems very monotonal. I don't know if I'm a great fan of the track texture either. Got some scrap rails lying around there on the left. That that's pretty good to see that we've got that. Warning board for a fifty. Yeah, like the fields off to the right. The, the, there just seems to be a few areas here and there which just look a little bit unfinished. We'll soon arrive at Aberdower. Aberdower. Don't forget to take your belongings with you before. Oh, that is tough. <coughs> Using emergency brake now because I was paying attention. The train looks a little bit tight going through the bridge there. It's on the platform, so it, that's all that matters. 
Yeah, so we'll jump up as promised and have a look at... Let's put the train into neutral so it stops making horrible noises at me. Uh, we'll have a look at the panel on the right-hand side there. So, funnily enough, the door release arrow is pointing to the left. Now, I wonder if that probably should be pointing to the right. Um, signal door deselect button. Um, door close into lock. Cab door release button. And then pretty much, yeah standard cab equipment, posters and all of that good stuff we've had to do a little bit of an edit there because um, someone turned the microphone off and didn't record the rest of the route we are here at Abadur like in the little signal box on the platform there waiting until 9.06 for departure the good news is by doing the little edit we are now running on time again so this is now my second bit Second time driving the route between um, here at Abador to uh, Markinch. So, no excuses for getting it wrong. <laughs> uh, and I haven't turned the safety systems back on, so let's do that straight away. Say sneaky little edit. Yeah, the one seventy is looking nice. I know I've said that already, but the 170 is definitely looking nice. Okay, it is time to do one of my favourite tests that I do on every single train sim route. Um, some routes pass it, some routes fail it. So let's give this a go. Basically, what we're going to try and do is open the doors going along. And in theory, it shouldn't let you do it. So let's press... No, we are good! That is good news. It is refusing to let me open the doors driving along. That is positive. That's one of the things that does really gripe me is when you're able to open doors going along. I don't know what it is. It just, uh, it's just one of those things that, that really gets to me. Right, Kinghorn, 4.1 miles. Really pleased about that. That's that's. It's so simple, but it's made me happy that we can't do it. We will check it from inside the saloon though. Let's just, I know we've just put these in. Let's just isolate some safety systems. Wouldn't advise doing this in real life. Go out into the train and... No, it's locked. Well done. That makes me happy. Um, one of the things you could do on the 385 in the early days was drive along and open the doors and it's I don't know it's just something about being able to do that that really bugs me so yeah really pleased that you can't do that so. get it down for the 65 there uh, we'll put our safety systems back in now our vigilance and our driver safety device and next station stop is Kinghorn Yeah, just look at this coming up on the left-hand side here, the, the texture in this field here. It just looks really... you kind of got the jagged edges there, and it's... It still looks very work-in-progress-y to me. Oh, I like the harbour. That's very nice. Uh, we're not stopping here, are we? No. Confirm we are not stopping here. 2.4 miles to Kinghorn. Back.
back to 50. I am liking the graffiti. We had the Brighton Mainline, uh, one of the mods for the Brighton Mainline London Commuter installed recently, and that gave us a lot of graffiti on objects. It does look a little bit repetitive, though. This is kind of the same graffiti all over the place. Nevertheless, having the graffiti on there does give it that sort of extra level of, uh, of realism. Yeah, again, just looking in the field to the left there, and like the field text just seem a little bit off. On the flip side, however, people walking on the promenade and the water textures look lovely. That credit where credit's due. That that looks nice. That does look nice. Yeah, def definitely got to give credit where credit's due. The water texture's there and the, the promenade. Really nice. So we have got Kinghorn, Kikoldi and Markinch left to go. And let's see if the automatic announcements are still working, see if I've managed to break them. Got a warning for a 30 there. do need to test, we've just gone over the TPWS loops there, when we do the drive in the opposite direction um, and we come into Waverley we'll test the TPWS loops. You shouldn't be able to go over them at any more than 10 miles an hour without tripping them so we can, uh, we'll, we'll test that theory when we get down to uh, Edinburgh Waverley on trip number 2. Uh, and I mentioned the 30 and then completely failed to brake for it. Weird things happening with the lighting on the entrance of the tunnel there. As we come in towards Kinghorn, are we going to get a ding, 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 ding? Haven't heard one so far. Looks like the NPCs are bugging out on the platform. And we want free for the free. Yeah, didn't hear the automatic announcement going off as we come into there, so I think I've broke that. And we are free on the free. Oh! He's on the fence. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, if, if I had my soundboard working, which I don't, that would be a, a sad trombone for walking through the fence. You know the sound effect. Bit of, bit of fence clipping going on there. I like the little... Um, portals on the platform. I'm, I'm sure I just saw them. Am I going mad? There we go. Yeah, giving you a sea view from the platform. That's nice. I like that. Oof! It's a ghost town. Oh, 
heard that, we absolutely did have some station announcements, some generic station announcements, which is always good. I think the soundscape on the route is so important. I think the, the ambient sounds on the stations and the ambient sounds in general, um, they really do help to help to deliver the immersion on the route. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing improvements in that department with, with working um, working automatic announcements on more routes and kind of station announcements and that sort of thing. I mean, that's really going to help just to add to that immersion. So we've got Kakaldi and then we have Mark Inch. Got about 10 minutes left, just over 10 minutes. Again, the field on the left hand side there, the textures just look really kind of plain and basic it's only in places it's you know like the trackside textures here and the foliage and everything looks pretty good but you, then you get places where there's just nothing so whether that's you know a, a design choice for saving memory or not I don't I don't know but then when you look at like some of the um, like Nidilita barn or some or something like that and you look at the level of detail in the foliage and everything it's just phenomenal so you know, to, to say it's for memory purposes, I don't know whether I would buy that because other routes seem to have managed to, to have done it. I like the roundabout we've just gone past. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, field textures over. It just you know they're quite patchy and tidy and repetitive. You can kind of sort of. Yeah, I know what I mean. Hopefully you do too. Right, football team number two. It's not a match day. Zero point seven miles. Are we going to get an auto announcement, or it could be that the auto announcement system they've got in isn't particularly particularly robust? Because, like I say, I have kind of had to reload this, and after the reload, the in nope, take it all back. We'll soon arrive at Kirkcaldy. So the previous station didn't have an Not auto today. announcement, but Kokodi does. Liking the brake sounds from outside. Yeah, that's pretty decent. The brake sounds are quite nice there. Oh, we have working elevators as well by the looks of it. I'm in free camp mode, so I don't know how this is going to work. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> and we've got one of our collectibles over there. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Pretty good.
are off to McKinch where this train will terminate. Got our friendly graffiti on the wall to the left. Might be some genuine Banksies on the route. That'll be a pretty cool collectible. And quite a steep uphill grading. Six miles to McKinch. So time for a little bit of a debrief, I believe. Just clicking buttons, that's why my face has come up on the screen temporarily. Um, so we are going to be doing another run, part two on the route, which is going to be uh, Glenross down to Edinburgh. So that will take us across the, um, the west side of the circle, so down the other side of the circle. Um, that video is going to be up pretty soon, so do, if not already, I will leave a link down in the description below um, for that. Very interested, as always, to hear your thoughts and comments on the route. Do leave those down in the comment section below. What are my thoughts? Where am I at with this? So, for me, this is the sort of route I like driving. It's, it's got some decent speeds on it. There's a bit of 100 mile an hour running earlier on. You know, it's sort of 60, 70 miles an hour. You've got some decent distance between stations, but you've got enough stations to keep you busy. There's speed limit changes, there's gradients. For me, this is the sort of route I like because I'm busy in the cab. I've got something to do. The scenery is constantly changing. Um, you know, we're going through towns, we're going along the coast, we're going along the fourth bridge. The fourth bridge looks absolutely superb in game so it is definitely the sort of route that I like driving it takes sort of between 40 minutes to an hour to do one part of the one part of the circle again really really sort of nice length to jump in and, and do it and it's a sort of route that I could sort of learn to route learn um, pretty easy after a little while so eventually you'll be driving it hubless uh, which definitely definitely works for me the fact you've only got the 170 on here is that's a bit of a, a bone of contention for me. Obviously we have got the 158 coming out or hopefully coming out for this route which is going to help. I would like to have seen Railtor and Freight on it. I, I think there's only sort of one or two freight services do, do run over this route but it would have been really nice to have those included from day one. Although I know Rivet Games have now said that they are going to look at putting those layers on. Um, so that will make it will make it a little bit better. But I think the fact you've got both sides of the circle, uh, both sides of the five circle, both the um, the east and the west branch, um, gives it that little bit more interest. So there's a couple of shunt moves you can do, like we discussed on the um, on the map. So you've actually got these sort of spurs here, so you can complete sort of go around in circles. A bit of fun to be have with free roam mode and the likes there as well. That that would be pretty cool. So there is a little bit of potential there. The 170, I think they've done a really good job of. The 170 looks nice. Would love to have had some proper GSMR functionality, um, been able to register, but I've said that on pretty much every single train we've had. I would have liked some way to interact with the auto announce system as well. But the fact we've got auto announcements and they do seem to work um, pretty robustly by that one station, which could have been a me problem, um, I'm, I'm really pleased that we, we do now have that in game. Again, TMS functionality would have been nice. It's kind of got a basic level of functionality in the cab, but overall the modelling is pretty nice on the train. It looks really good. The sounds, as I mentioned earlier, I, I think 170s are a little bit more droney than this, um, but it's a really welcome addition to the game, and it, it, it's certainly not a bad train. It's certainly not unplayable. The physics on it feel really nice. Uh, and for me personally, I know for a fact someone's already relivered this into a southern train because it was me. <laughs> and there's going to be a video out in the next day or so, um, if not already. I'll put a link down in the description. Um, so yeah, it's a really, really welcome addition to the game to, to have it in game. And I think they've done a pretty good job on it. Like I said, my only thing would be, I think the sounds are not quite right. In terms of negativity, and of course there's always going to be some sort of negativity, we're just coming up to the spur now to join the um, the other side of the five circles. You can go round and round and round in circles. In terms of negativity, I think some of the textures in the fields and the foliage textures are not quite there. So whilst I think the route is good, there are areas of it which look absolutely stunning. Um, like we've, we've had the harbour earlier on and we come alongside the coast and stuff and it, it looks really, 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 really good. But then there are other areas of the route where it just feels a little bit still work in progress, a little bit still not finished. And you almost kind of want to say, you know, take this away, give it another two or three weeks in development, 
like the field over on the right there, you know, with the, the, the textures just look really sort of tiley. Take it away, keep it in development for another couple of weeks, then come back with a, with a more polished product. I think when we look at recent release, again at the field on the left there, you can see the tiling on the, on the texture. I, I think when we look at recent releases, such as the Suffragette line, um, which was absolutely superb, um, Blackpool Branches, Rosenheim Salzburg, um, Glossop even not too long ago, you know, even the Benino line from, from Rivet Games themselves, I think those routes are almost next level. You know, this route just doesn't feel like it's up to the same sort of standard as those. It doesn't feel like it's got the same amount of polish on it. It's almost like this needs to go away and just have a couple more weeks spent in development just to bring it up to that standard. It just doesn't feel like it's it's quite there. <coughs> Does that put me off playing it or would that put me off buying it? Not necessarily. I think whether you're going to buy a route is very subjective. You know, different routes appeal to different people. So it's not for me to tell you whether you should or whether you shouldn't buy it, whether it is good or whether it isn't good, all I can do is, is give you my opinion. And I'll be really interested to hear yours down in the comment section below. But that, that's my main feedback. You know, I haven't, other than those people clipping into the fence, I haven't as yet come across any sort of bugs that make the game unplayable or anything that's sort of... You know, it's always disappointing when you find bugs in games, absolutely it is, but I haven't come across anything that's... Um, you know, game game changingly bad, if that makes sense. So I wouldn't say this was a bad route. I wouldn't say this was a bad train, but I wouldn't say it's it's not top tier either. It's kind of somewhere in the middle. It's a nice drive. It's playable, but you know, given a little bit longer in development, I think it had a lot of potential that that could have been tapped into. So that's that's kind of where I am with it. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts down in the comments section below. As always, do you agree with what I've said? Have you got your own opinions? Do you, do you completely disagree with me? We'll soon arrive at Markinch. Don't forget to take your belongings with you before you leave the train. Markinch, where this train will terminate. If you do want to discuss Train Sim World, Train Sim Classic, or real railways, aviation, buses, or anything like that, then you're more than welcome to join our very friendly and inclusive Discord server, and you'll find a link to that in the description below. Likewise, if you want to see the Class 170 in Southern livery running over some Southern routes, there'll be a link to that in the description below, and there will also be a link to Part 2 on this video, Part 2 of this video, um, where we drive on the west slash north side of the route so please do go and check that out if you have enjoyed it please do hit the like button consider subscribing that would be absolutely awesome and i hope to see you in another video very soon bye for now